Hi everyone, this is Miss Ellis with my first at home learning video. Um, I've thought about doing at home learning videos for a while, so this uh, quarantine gives me the chance to try it. So um, I thought it might be helpful to do some interactive read alouds. So basically I will read a book with some targeted questions like I would use in class um, and be asking some questions so that as a family you could sit together and think about those questions together or have your child talk to you or your children talk to you about um, their thoughts to the questions. So we're gonna start with one of my favorite authors. He's written a lot of books for kids and uh, I thought this is a good one to begin with. So this book is called, What Do You Do With a Tale Like This? So this is a book by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. They've written a lot of books and they're all informational nonfiction. So informational nonfiction means they're writing a bunch of facts about something, which in this case, I bet you could make that prediction. You got it, about animals. So what I'll do is ask you to think for a second now, what might we learn about in this book? It's called, What Do You Do With a Tale Like This? So what might Steve Jenkins and Robin Page tr try to teach us about animals? So take a second to think about that or talk with somebody next to you about that. So I hope you had a chance to talk with somebody or think for yourself about what this book might be about. So what do you do with a tale like this by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page? What do you do with a tale like this? Now, the reason, one of the reasons I love these books is I don't know if you can tell from the video, but that's all cut up paper. So Steve Jenkins makes these amazing detailed illustrations just by cutting up little bits of paper. So every color on here is just one more piece of paper that he cut. So this eye has a big black circle and then a, a smaller gray circle and then a smaller yellow circle and then a smaller black circle and then this little white circle. And those were all pieces of paper that he cut to make that illustration. So keep an eye out for that as we read. Animals use their noses, ears, tails, eyes, mouths, and feet in many different ways. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but already they're giving us a hint about what might be in this book. See if you can guess which animal part, oh sorry, see if you can guess which animal each part belongs to and how it is used. At the back of the book you can find out more about these animals. So that's exactly what we're going to do. At each section I'm going to show you all the pictures and then ask you to stop and think about what animal you think that came from and what they might do with that part of their body. What do you do with a nose like this? Now take a second and look, sorry, I'm trying to orient it, right? Look at those pictures. See if you recognize any animal parts there. Now I know when I do this with my students, a lot of them recognize this one first. What do you think that one is? You got it, it's an elephant. What about this one over here? Can you tell what that one is? If you guessed alligator or crocodile, you are right. Now, usually my students have a hard time with this one and this one over here. So we'll find those out in the next section. And then this one is usually a puzzle. It looks a lot like one thing, but it actually is from something else. So let's find out. <clears throat> If you're a platypus, you use your nose to dig in the mud. If you're a hyena, you find your next meal with your nose. If you're an elephant, you use your nose to give yourself a bath. See if I can show you this next one. If you're an alligator, 
you breathe through your nose while hiding in the water. So I don't know if you can tell right here, whoop, this way, their nose just sticks out over the surface of the water. So all you can see of an alligator are its eyes and its nose when it's in the water. If you're a mole, this is usually the one that surprises my students the most. If you're a mole, you use your nose to find your way around. Oh, find your way underground, excuse me. So those are all little feelers. They don't actually use their eyes. They use those little feelers to find their way around under the ground. So take a second and think, were you right? Did you know any of these already? That's great. If you already knew some of them, that's awesome. But if you, they were new, then that means you learned about five new things about animals. Let's see what part of the body is next. You, can you have a guess of what it might be? Well, I can't hear you, but I hope you're making some great guesses. Let's see. Oh, did anybody guess ears? If you did, you were right. What do you do with ears like these? So take a second to look, see if you can recognize the part of what animal it comes from, or if you know anything about how these animals use their ears. Let's see. I'm recognizing this one way over here. That reminds me of a hippo. What about these here? This one has me a little confused. Here, it talks about ears, but I don't see any ears in that picture. Well, let's read. If you're a jackrabbit, you use your ears to stay cool. That's pretty amazing. They open their ears so wide that it lets the heat escape while they're in the desert. If you're a bat, you see with your ears. So they use their hearing and some special waves they send out into the air to tell where things are. If you're a hippopotamus, you close your ears while you're underwater. Could you imagine? If you're a cricket, you hear with ears that are on your knees. That one is always a big surprise. Right about here is where their ears are, right on their knees. If you're a humpback whale, a lot of kids don't realize humpback whales actually have ears. If you're a humpback whale, you hear sounds hundreds of miles away. It's pretty amazing. Can't even tell where those ears are. Okay, were you right? Did you guess right about any of these animals from their body part? Great. Okay, let's think what body part might come next. We've done ears and we've done noses. Hmm. Let's see what's next. Oh, did you guess tails? What do you do with a tail like this? So take a second to think. Do you recognize any animal parts here? Do you know any of these animals? And do you know how they use this tail? I think we probably all recognize this one. We know what that animal does with their tail. Well, let's see. If you're a giraffe, you brush off pesky flies with your tail. Look at that right in the picture. I'm pointing to the computer instead of the book. Right here, they have this little brush at the end and they swing it around to whisk away the flies. If you're a skunk, oh, that's the one we thought it was. If you're a skunk, you lift your tail up to warn that a stinky spray is on the way. If you're a lizard, look at this one. Look at that, let's trace that. Whoa. Uh-oh, there's a break in the middle. If you're a lizard, you break off your tail to get away. Pretty amazing. If you're a scorpion, you, your tail can give a nasty sting. It's a little stinger right on the end there. If you're a monkey, you hang from a tree by your tail. 
Did you know that? I bet you did. Were you right about any of them? I think you knew this one probably. I think you knew about how our skunk uses its tail. But did you know about a giraffe or a lizard, a scorpion or a monkey? Let's see, what bar body part could be next? We've done eyes, sorry, we've done ears, we've done noses, and we've done tails. Hmm, let's see what's next. Oh, it's a good one, it's a good one. Let's see, did you guess eyes? Okay, so take a second to look. What do you do with eyes like these? See if you can recognize what animal they belong to or what they might do with those eyes. Each one of these has something special about their eyes. Okay, are you ready to find out? Here we go. If you're an eagle, you can spot tiny animals from high in the air. If you're a chameleon, you can look two ways at once. See, that's pretty amazing. Our eyes move together. Even if I turn to look this way, both my eyes point that way. If I look this way, both my eyes turn that way. We can't control them separately, but lizards can. They can turn their eyes in different directions so I can look this way and this way at the same time. If you're a bush baby, you use your large eyes to see clearly at night. Yep, that's a really good clue. If you ever see an animal with really big eyes, that probably means they're nocturnal. They're awake at night and they need those extra big eyes to take in more sunlight or moonlight and that at that time and getting in more of that light allows them to see better. Our eyes are kind of small. That's how you know we're meant to be diurnal or awake during the day. Let's see this one. That's called a horned lizard. If you're a horned lizard, you squirt blood out of your eyes. Now I remember reading they do that to scare away predators. Because if a predator sees you squirting something out of your eyes, it scares them and they will run away. Okay, there's one more down at the bottom. Let's see what this one says. If you're a four-eyed fish, you look above and below the water at the same time. So look right here. Let's see if I can get this right to the camera. Look right here. I don't know if you can tell, but they have a part of the eye that's above the water and a part of the eye that's below the water. So it's almost like two eyes inside of one. So they can see what's above the water and below the water at the same time. Pretty amazing. So were you right about any of these? A lot of these were a little different, huh? This one was hard. Okay, let's think about what might be coming next. We've done eyes, we've done ears, we've done tails, noses, I almost forgot. Oh, I like this one too. Feet, did you guess? So see if you can identify where these came from, what animal these belong to. What do you do with feet? like this. Make a prediction. What animal might it be? And what might they do with their, that foot that makes it special? Okay, let's read and find out. Whoa! If you're a gecko, you use your sticky feet to walk on the ceiling. If you're a mountain goat, you leap from ledge to ledge. Now, I've actually seen that. It's pretty amazing. They jump up these cliffs with rocks, all steep all the way up, and they make it look easy. If you're a blue-footed booby, you do a dance. Now, I have seen this bird in the wild, too, and their feet are even brighter blue than it looks in this picture. They're bright, bright blue. And there's other ones called red-footed boobies. And can you guess what color their feet are? Well, they're not blue. Next, let's see down here. If you're a water strider, you can walk on water. 
Now this is a little teeny tiny bug, but their, their feet are made just right so they can walk across the water. If you're a chimpanzee, you feed yourself with your feet. Don't get any ideas. So did you guess any of those? Those, a lot of those were new, I bet. Okay, what body part might be next? Well, if you guessed mouths, you were right. What do you do with a mouth like this? Make a prediction. What animal might it belong to? And what might they do with it that makes it special? Okay, let's find out. If you're a pelican, you use your mouth as a net to scoop up fish. Now, I, when, one time when I was traveling, I watched pelicans dive and catch fish for about three hours. And they catch so many fish inside their, their beaks. They dive down and this whole bottom part of their throat just opens up like a big bag. I watched this one pelican catch maybe 30 fish inside its mouth and they kept jumping out because it was too full. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. If you're an angler fish, archer fish, excuse me, archer fish, you catch insects by shooting them down with water. Look at that, he squirts water right out of the water he's in, hits the bug and it lands in the water and he can eat it. If you're an anteater, you use, uh, sorry, you capture termites with your long tongue. If you're an egg-eating snake, you use your mouth to swallow eggs larger than your head. Pretty amazing. Our mouth <laughs> doesn't open very wide compared to how big our head is. But for a snake, they can actually unhinge their jaw and stretch their mouth open to eat something bigger than their head and fit it down their throat. Pretty amazing. And last, if you're a mosquito, we know those guys, you use your mouth to suck blood. Yuck. <laughs> so were you right about any of those? I bet some of those were a surprise. Okay, let's see what part comes next. Oh, the end comes next. This is really cool. Steve Jenkins books always have a more information section. So if you borrow one of these books from the library, you might find that it has a section like this at the back. So if you were really interested in one of those animals and you wanted to learn more, you just go to the back and there's a little bit of a section about each one. So I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I'm going to read more books by Steve Jenkins and try to help families do a little bit more of this work at home. So good luck. Thank you.